Who we've been missing on the defensive side of the ball most, we'll discuss coming up next here on Locked On Sooners. You are Locked On Sooners, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma Sooners. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks again for listening to Locked On Sooners and making Locked On Sooners your first listen every single day. Shout out to all the everydayers out there. Who have you been missing most on the defensive side of the ball, Jay? Oh, man, John, when I look through it, first and foremost, we've been blessed that it hasn't been awful on the defensive side when it comes to injuries. We got a lot of people banged up, but yep. luckily it's been banged up injuries where they can continue to play. But the loss of Kendall Doby to me was probably the largest loss out there. I mean, there's other options, of course, like a Gentry Williams or such. We may talk about that, but really seeing Kendall go down, that changed the dynamic of that cheetah role and everything that happened in there. The good thing is we got Desan McCullough back, so he was able to fill in some of that capacity, but Kendall was a game changer, not only as a blitzer and as a coverage guy. The dude could scheme. He understood the scheme. He would move dudes into the right spots. He was he was cerebral when it came to being out there in that spot, and the fact that he was small and mighty, people, they underestimate him. Defenses underestimate him. Then you'd see him go into the backfield and get tackles, kind of like we're seeing out of Eli Bowen today. Mm-hmm. I mean, Doby was probably, to me, the biggest loss on that defensive side because he changed. He helped change one side of the field all the time. Heck, I think that's why you saw the emergence of Robert Spears Jennings. He could really go out there and kind of freelance as a free safety a lot more. Now he's kind of picking up some slack as the young players are playing, Sammy and Mosego. But again, with the Sam McCullough back healthy, I think that helps a lot. But man, we miss Dolby a lot. The defense, you can see a noticeable dip without him. He was a playmaker in, in every sense of the word in coverage, in the run game, as a blitzer. I mean, I don't know if anybody blitzes as well as Kendall Dolby on this team. Oh, man, he's so good. And, and he loves it, too. That's my favorite part. He likes that more than interceptions. He prefers sacks. Yeah, oh. and he just, he just has such a great knack for it, a feel for when to time his blitz. You know, he was catching guys off guard because he was lining up in coverage and not moving up to the line of scrimmage and giving himself away. And so yep. there, there's just a certain feel that he has for playing that cheetah position that, listen, he's going to be one of those guys you get back next year after he recovers from injury. Hopefully he comes back and he's 100% Kendall Dolby because he is a dude that really helps to transform a defense. I mean, is he – the? he's not going to be the guy that gets the headlines. He's not going to be the guy that um, is a, a first-round draft pick or a top 15 pick on the defensive side of the ball, but he just does so many things for you on defense that makes your defense better. Another one of those guys for me, Gentry Williams, dude, like yeah, Gentry, so every nice. time that he's played, he's been really, really good. And I think we've been saying this now for over a year and a half that when he's on the field, he's one of your best players because he's such a good cover player and he just plays with a, a tenacity and an aggressiveness similar. Uh, you mentioned Eli Bowen before, similar to Eli Bowen, someone who's not afraid to play the ball in the air, who does a really good job tracking it keeps his eyes on the quarterback while maintaining good coverage and then is willing to come up and play the run. Uh, that, that might be some of Gentry's shoulder issues is his willingness to play the run at the same time. It helps your defense so much when you have cornerbacks that are willing to come up and stick their nose in. That's why teams aren't necessarily very successful running screens against Oklahoma is because they've got corners that are willing to come up and play the run. So that's a dude that you got to figure out a way to get the winter soldier arm and shoulder onto his body so that he can come back and play opposite of Eli Bowen next year. Cause if you have Gentry Williams and Eli Bowen next year playing cornerback for you, I, I feel pretty good about it. I feel really good about that position moving forward. It's just a matter of, can he stay healthy? Yeah. That's going to be the question is, can we keep them healthy? And man, Gentry, Gentry, got to the point after last season, he was shutting down half the field. People yeah. were afraid to throw it to his side of the ball. And I love that. I mean, the, the, the initial interception against Quinn Ewers and ever since that moment, teams were like, all right, should we test him? No, we probably shouldn't test don't, him. And test. they stopped. They went right back to Woody. They're like, no, we're going to go, we're going to go pick on that guy. Cause they didn't want to go with him because of the experience. And then when they went to the young guy and he started showing, they're like, Oh, no, 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 go back, go back, go back, go back. So, you you you're gonna need that. You're gonna want that. And I think Eli Bowen can provide a little bit of that. Him uh, and as soon as like either Jacoby Johnson or Makari Vickers really gets the scheme down out there, they're gonna be a threat 
Same thing with Jeremiah Newcomb. You're going to start seeing some threats at the corner spot as well. But, man, Gentry was a game changer. It's like him and Kendall really made it easier for the safeties to do other stuff, even the linebackers. Like, I think back to even the Kendall piece. Kendall, Robert Spears Jennings was really good at especially in the Tennessee game. when He was able to blitz and get that sack that forced that fumble. Kendall had created a hurry on the opposite side of, you know, of the lineup when he went after Nico. And so he forced a hurry and he had to get rid of it. And so Nico knows, okay, I need to watch for this dude coming my direction and see if he does a delay blitz. And you're not paying attention to Spears Jennings coming behind you at that point. Those are those type of players and those plays that you get, man. But now, like I said, with McCullough back playing more linebacker and they're using him more as an edge, he's able to help force that even him and uh, our Mason Thomas. So I know that long-term we're fine, but John, whew, I, I, I hope that Dolby comes back healthy. If he comes back healthy, man, I, I think he's a game changer for this defense. Yeah, it, it's going to look a lot better. And you're getting a nice influx of defensive talent next year, especially at cornerback where you're getting a Malik Hawkins and a Cortland Guillory, two four-star guys that have high upside and big time prospects. I think they're, they're really good players. And again, you add to that defensive backfield. Uh, and I consider the cheetah, both a defensive back and a linebacker. So, um, it, it's there, but yeah, you have Dolby, you have either him or Williams back for this season and your defense is looking better than what it already is, which it's been pretty good this year. It's just yep. not been, I, I will say it's been good enough to win more games at times. The coverage has let them down. You add two of those guys back that are really good cover players and are guys that'll make plays on the football. And again, it does help your defense. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was a big weekend in SEC action. What happened? What was our biggest takeaway? We'll discuss coming at next here on Locked On Sooners. Our friends over at 5 Hour Energy know that passionate football fans isn't just a hobby. It's a way of life. It takes a lot of energy to power through all-day tailgates, touchdown celebrations, or the agonizing second overtime, or just bad losses that we've seen but this is why they've created the stand the fan five hour energy shot with a special flavor called fan fuel the energy shot made just for super fans like us the fans who are first in the parking lot and who are last to leave we see you you know that what else gives me a bit of sooner fan fuel this week the moments when we get a Javante Barnes run or find out that he's healthy enough to play or we get offensive linemen back in preparation for this Alabama game Whatever it is, 5-Hour Energy knows that no matter what team you root for, being a fan requires heart, soul, and a whole lot of energy. Whether you're prepping for the big tailgate or ironing your jersey, your game day to-do list is always a mile long. That's why the limited edition stand, the fan 5-Hour Energy shot is here and help you keep your fueling throughout the season. What's your fan fuel this week? Whatever it is, do it at 5-Hour Energy, available on 5 energycom ships nationwide. 